This week's episode of the Dexter Young's podcast is brought to you by. G'day, you can't. <laughs> That's we Harvey, but if he's from Australia. <laughs> I'm back. Play the fucking intro, Niv. What's up, motherfuckers? Yeah, what's up, motherfuckers? You're all very welcome back. No, welcome back. Welcome. It's been six months. Yeah. I'm just, home. I'll, I'll just be over here doing admin. I love what you've done with the place. <laughs> the fuck is this? Fingered and Downey Jr. Two, what, two things that go hand in hand. Turn upside down. Well, <laughs> Who's that there? Jim Morrison. Is this what he looks like? <laughs> Who's that in the middle? Frank Sinatra. It is not. Jeez, he looks great. You know what? And there's JB. Oprah. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Whoopi. No. no. I don't know. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah. Welcome back. All them, all them <laughs> celebrities look the same to me. <laughs> so I just thought when Daddy was away, fuck it, you know. I bet he'll do his best up. <laughs> Do you know what? See, when no the husband's away and the wife goes, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to decorate this Fucking place. no expense spent. <laughs> <laughs> it looks fantastic. <laughs> Fuck me. <laughs> Boy, Joker does it. It looks nice. It's good. It's uh, well it's, done. It's only because I can't get my mug shot from Carrick Macross. How did you get Who put them on? And how? You, oh. Oh, there we, are there footery fingers? Yeah, you can turn well, you them. Could put, you could turn it upside down, yeah. It's more like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's, He's only uh, fucking, fucking back. That's, bit, that's better for the feng shui. That's fucking. <laughs> Sorry, if you only listen to this, you missed out Thailand, from, was it? <laughs> <laughs> feng shui. Very good. Uh, so I'm going to keep mine up, I guess. Keep... That's the way I do it. <laughs> from below. <laughs> <laughs> Stand you there and open your legs up. Like... Fuck off, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, Jesus, good to see That's you again. good to be back, And there's not, no disrespect to any of the guests we've had on, but none of them look good, as good as you now. <sighs> Tell you what, I bet you none of them just fucking tired, but I, Connor Keyes, I... I know I've done a lot of long-term flights the last year, mm-hmm. right? And I don't know if it's the way I was lying in business class, because I upgraded the business class. Cause... Oh, the way I was lying <laughs> in business class. I, man, <laughs> I, I have not stopped farting this day, right? Oh, no. And That's one thing we haven't had in six months. Somebody farting on. It's an on-air fart. No, there might have been silent ones I didn't know about. But I'll tell you right now, I don't trust <laughs> anything that's happening <laughs> below my nipples, right? And anything. I was that bloated from the plane that this morning I farted and watched my stomach go down. <laughs> like in real time. A new weight loss program. I swear to God, man. Do the kind of fart. Do it normally a fart is just you just hit your leg and you fart. These are the kind of farts where you hit your leg, you fart, you put your leg back down, you continue your day, and you realize you're still farting. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, I farted for a good 15, 20 paces across my flat this morning. You're literally just pressurized. I swear to God. You're like a fucking cabin. It's so bad. Like, like, lying in business class. Like, what an absolute cunt you are. I'm a change, man. <laughs> I don't know if we even talked about it whenever we did the few Zoom ones, but... No. So, I, mean, I, I upgraded when I flew over. For anyone that hasn't heard, this is what happened. <laughs> I, I, by the way, I, we, I witnessed this in real time. You were texting me as it was happening I, on the way over. Going, oh, fuck, I've just... So... It was dumb, like. <laughs> so flying over, I had to do an all-nighter because I was to leave the house at 2 in the morning to get to Dublin Airport for, I think my flight was at 6 or something, mm-hmm. right? So I thought, right, fuck it. I'll upgrade from Dublin to Doha for the first leg of the flight. That way I'll get a good five, six hours sleep. That'll help. Because I was, I was landing in Australia and gigging the next day. Mm-hmm. And I was like, right, I want to try and beat the jet lag. So I'll upgrade just the first flight. It was something like 500 euro. I thought, I'll do that. We fucking we rest and all right, and I'd never really seen business class before. I knew the seats were bigger, mm-hmm. but I didn't know what the crack was, right? And it very clearly didn't belong there because the stewardess was like, "Are you all right? <laughs> Do you need to know what that button does?" And I was like, "I don't." So I thought maybe it, it just reclined a wee bit further. It goes into a full fucking bed, right? Oh, you fucking. So I get in. It's freezing cold in December, so I'm just fucking straight into the bed, straight to sleep. Woke up. I went fuckers a menu there, and I opened the menu. It's like old fashions. Well, I don't mind if I do, right? <laughs> So we get the Doha hammered, right? <laughs> and I walked up to the guy and I was like, how much is it to upgrade from here to Sydney? And he told me. And I went, nah, it's not worth it. That's not, fuck, that's a disgrace. And I walked about 10 feet 
and the old fashions and my ego were all mixed together. <laughs> and I heard a voice. Which is a dangerous cocktail. I heard a voice in my head going, you're Mickey fucking Bartlett. Blah, blah, right? So I went back and I paid for it. And for, I have never known comfort like it in my life. Sitting on the plane from, from Doha, right? They give you a glass of champagne. I was like, gug, guess not. <laughs> right? <laughs> then they brought out, this is before the plane even took off. They brought out a wee cube of like braised beef and like wasabi fucking sauce and stuff, right? And I was like, oh, lethal. <laughs> right? I look around everybody else's cars and it with a knife and fork and I'm just fucking <laughs> off fucking cloth. Man. So then when I landed, it was like, there's no way I can fly economy on the way home. Oh, so once you've gone to that, once you, you, once can't, you... you can't do it for that long a flight. Like, <laughs> so I've been out for Australia for six months and I've come back with less money. <laughs> Gigged every day for three months and I'm fucking skint. <laughs> once you lay back, you never go back. Sort of God, man. It's the, never known comfort like it. But they got the seat on that airplane that's they... treating me better than my own girlfriend. Does. <laughs> you can't step down again. You can't. It's, it's like, so you're never going to Australia again. Yeah. It's never. It's like, I'll go once a year, maybe. Taylor, love you. But uh, it's fucking. <laughs> Oh, I, when I seen that, I was like, you didn't. Please tell me you didn't. You were like, I did, I. Fuck, and then, but then flying back, sure, I got into the lounge. I didn't realize you were allowed in the lounges. So This was now, this was a scare. This is maybe a public safety announcement to the airline out there. Um, that there are people like Mr. Bartlett who exist. So you told me yesterday that basically what happens is, in especially the double-decker ones, there's a bar there. No, no, no. So, no, 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 no. This is before I got on the plane. This is in the airport. So the, there's a bar there's there. There's a lounge, right? Uh-huh. And you walk in, you show them the boarding pass, and they're like, welcome, Mr. Bartlett. And I'm like, this is already too classy for me. Right? I'm not a Mr. Bartlett type of fellow. I'm a well lad. Right? And you go, I go in, I grab, just grab a seat, set my bag down, and I'm look, looking around, like, there's nobody here. There's no, like, staff here. And I'm like, what the fuck's... So it's just help yourself, right? <laughs> That's so like what a big, I mean. There's a big pot of chicken teriyaki, and I thought, nah, I don't want to eat that before a flight, because what if I shit in the plane, Right? <laughs> Then there was a whole wheel of cheeses. Oh, a wheel? A wheel. And I thought, I'll take a wee bit of brie and a couple of be- bickies, right? Yeah. And there was gouda, which, oh. I, which I believe is just cheddar. But Oh, no, it's not. Good. Isn't it? Well, whatever it is. Little Dutch stuff. Oh. Uh, but I fucking filled the plate full of that. And then I thought, geez, there's beer in all there. Look at that there. There's beer. I wonder if you'll just... And I saw somebody just grabbing a beer and I thought, maybe I'll have a wee beer. And then I looked and I saw that there was bottles of whiskey and gin and stuff. And I thought, maybe I'll have a wee, I'll have a wee whiskey and coke just to... Just to pass the time when I'm sitting in the lounge here for the next two to three hours, right? And, <laughs> and the the bottle of whiskey had, do you know them wee doofers? It's like a wee a wee teat, and uh-huh. it measures out one measure. Yeah, right. So I poured one measure in, but I wasn't paying attention, and the wee teat was broke. So I filled the glass of whiskey by accident. <laughs> and then because it was that strong and rotten, I was like, well, I can't go back down to a weaker whiskey. So by the time I by the time they called me to get on the plane, I was blocked. <laughs> And then, the airline went bankrupt. And then I thought, I thought to myself, I'm, go, I'm getting too cocky here. I'm going to have to pretend I've never been in business class before. <laughs> I was like a her letting on she never suck the dick. I said, I, I don't even know how. What am, what am I supposed to do? Right? And then I went up to the... the air sure just walked away and you're like... Oh, man, fucking absolutely <laughs> sticking up my asshole. <laughs> and then I fucking went for a pee and realized there was a bar at the back of it. But I was that drunk and tired at this point that when I... It was like... You know the so there's a bar on the plane. There's a bar, a fucking full bar on the, on the back of the plane, right? But we we seats where you can clip yourself in and sit and have a wee fucking. You right? clip yourself in the I, bar, get right? the fuck. Just look out the window, and all, right? But it, I was that drunk and I hadn't talked to anybody in about eight hours at this point. I was drinking <laughs> the fucking. It was, I opened the curtain and it was like, do you know the bit in The Shining when Jack Nicholson walks into the bar and there's somebody there and he's all the fuck. You doing? I was like, hey, whoa! And there was a wee Filipino guy who was like, "You have a nice time in Australia." I was like, oh, class, man. You smoke in here? And then uh, <laughs> he's like, what are you, why are you, you leaving Australia? Are you leaving Ireland? I was is like, it oh, Mexico? No, Philippines. Oh, Philippines, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, so what did you think it was doing? It was my, you tell me I'm not. I think you've just lost a bit of your age, just that's all I'm saying. Bit of my age? Yeah, your edge. Oh, edge. Yeah. Well, if we're going to talk about fucking accents and pronouncing words properly, say edge properly. You fucking, I'm edge. a little tired. Edge. Let's not fight on the first one back, Connor. Oh, no, I wouldn't have fight messed with you. you. I couldn't fight with you. You couldn't fight when I've been training. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that. I and then uh, so yes, he's like, "Why are you? Why are you in Australia?" And I normally I'd be all, "Oh, just doing a bit of work." But it was that drunk. I was like, "Fucking stand up, I am funny as fuck." <laughs> knock knock, who's are me? Ha ha. And then uh, at one point, 
I was talking to him for that long. I got deja vu and I thought this plane's going to crash. I started texting people telling them I love them. <laughs> I did get one of those texts. I was get scared there. <clears throat> and I thought, oh no. It's blocked. They've been serving old fashions. Aye. No, they weren't even nice. It didn't matter. To, I, 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 I guess just, even for me, like obviously I've never flown business class, but knowing that you can, you begrudgingly get maybe a beer or whatever on the flight, never mind a cocktail. You know, and you're getting a cocktail. All the cocktails get, a stretch, though, because... Was it pre-made ones? No. No, I... But the, the basically, they've obviously just given our steward a list and go, right, make that. Mm -hmm. So he's gone, like, whiskey, bitters, sugar, ice. Put my finger in it, stir it a wee bit, and there you go. So it's just a glass of whiskey, like... Right. Yeah. Uh, As opposed to... What is it? I thought... Uh, is that not the whole thing? But there's a bit more of a system to it. Like, you need to fucking oh, right. strain the ice. You make it in the ice and strain it into another glass. And do you know what I mean? There's a... I don't right. really know. I keep fucking them up. Have I told you? I have a new drink, Connor. Oh, no. Right. Replacing the old-fashioned? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. It's like an old-fashioned, but turbocharged. Oh, right? It's called the Godfather. <laughs> because apparently it's what they were drinking on the set of the Godfather. Right? Right. And it's whiskey and disarano. Oh, yeah. Right? And you get a wee wedge of orange, squeeze the juice in it, rub the fucking wedge in the glass with a load of ice. Aye. Right. I reckon you could drink it. Is this a rano? Is that no, almond? Like cherry liqueur. Oh, cherry. It is almonds. It, I don't know. I don't I know one of them is almond. I don't can't remember which one I, it is. Uh, but by fuck. Didn't I? Lovely stuff. Um, and do they, is it a well-known drink here? No, because you have to, like even in Australia, we were having to tell people how to make it. Right. Uh, but it, in, Mel <coughs> in Melbourne, it got fucking got good to me. That's my new, that is my new... Mm. You couldn't buy it in a bar though, because you're, you're buying two drinks every time you want to get one drink. Ah, it's two full. So I was making them at home. But then sure, I was getting the measures all wrong one and made myself an offer I couldn't refuse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's that's you done. Ah, it's been yeah. a long couple of months. <laughs> Do you like that the tan? Put that fucking vape away. That's not a vape. What is it? It's a vape it's, it's a highlighter. <laughs> I'm just I'm mad into stationery. Because you're coughing already. I'm just, no, I'm mad into stationery. <laughs> I'm coughing because I smoked 20 fags yesterday. Because I couldn't find a vape. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that highlight is just on fire. <laughs> well, listen, all I can say is you're very welcome back. It's, you it's know, good it's, to be back. It's, back. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird thing. I say it's good to be back. Right? <laughs> it isn't. <laughs> it's great to be back here, right? Great to see you, Nev. I've missed you as well. It's great to see the lads, right? Was looking forward to getting home, right? Mm -hmm. Thought six months in Australia, I've had enough, right? Melbourne as a city can go fuck itself, mm -hmm. right? I don't like it. I don't like the people, right? right. The, for some, there's too many Chinese people there. Everything you, every, everything is noodles, right? Everything. I went to buy a pair of AirPods in the Apple shop. Noodles, right? <laughs> it's noodles, and people are rude. And Melbourne's like people only live in Melbourne, as far as I can tell, so they can tell people they live in Melbourne. Oh, okay. Right. One of those places, right. And I'd met too many people that I thought were nice that then fucking pissed me off. Mm -hmm. We went axe throwing one day, right? And there was a fella that was teaching the axe throwing. Lovely fella, real camp wee dude. Funny as fuck. I liked him, right? <laughs> Came to the show that night, free ticket. Instead of laughing, he would go... And I thought, take one of them axes and ram it into your fucking forehead, you fucking hipster cunt, you. Right? What was he clicking about? Because I don't know. Is that nothing to do for deaf people? No, that's... that's I thought, That's yes. waving. It's way, that's the clapping, isn't it, for deaf people? Because obviously they can't hear claps. So, but what's the clicking about? I know. Maybe he lost his cat. I don't know. But that, that pissed me off. <coughs> that was a weird thing. He was counting you into a dance. Thanks. I danced him too. He's a lovely man. <laughs> and by fuck, he could handle a chopper. <laughs> so he axe joke. But I made it about a dick. <laughs> welcome, I mean? welcome back, boy. I won the award. <laughs> Most drunk on an airline? I wasn't the most drunk. It was funny, like, it, it, I talked about it before, when it, uh, the different nationalities of uh, stewards. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you call them? Air hostess? What, no. What's a collective term for it? <clears throat> Air... Crew? Passenger crew? Passenger crew, arm doors for departure? That's what this is, the captain says. It, it, it... Airline staff... What the fuck's... Like, boys, I'm jet like You should know. I don't travel it, business class, no, I don't speak no, to them. You've been on a fucking plane before. But, <laughs> and by the way, I travel it's, business class, I don't speak to them. <laughs> it's the cabin you have crew. To, you have cabin crew. It's cabin crew. Thank you very much. Uh, but yeah, you, you notice the different nationalities and how they treat you when you're ordering drinks. 
Right. So yesterday from Doha, to, or I from Doha to Dublin, uh, the way dude was like, <clears throat> I was like, can I get a wee whiskey and coke? And he's like, <laughs> and I'd ring the bell, he'd be like, whiskey and coke. Yeah. <laughs> but, where's, where's he from? Uh, Dundrum. <laughs> Put that coffee down, it's making you cough. Why did I take a drink when I asked you a fucking question? That's <laughs> uh, why so I, I was saying, I was dying to get home. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get home, right? Looking out the window of the plane, I can see Ireland. I'm thinking, geez, she's green. Like, <laughs> fuck, there she is. Era, she's green. She's lovely, luscious, right? Landed in the airport and the captain comes on. He was from, he was from uh, Dundrum as well. He was like, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm really bad at accents, but he was from Dundrum. Right. Uh, it's, it's a terrible Dundrum impression. Ladies and gentlemen, you're very welcome to du Dublin. Uh, and then he goes, and I was like, fuck, it, I'm home. I'm going to kiss the ground. I'm home. And he goes, uh, unfortunately, the place we were supposed to park the plane has been occupied, so we have to wait for the five to ten minutes before the other plane leaves. And I thought, get me out of this fucking hole of a country. <laughs> Everything's broke. Get me back to Australia where things make sense and everything. Things work. Things fucking work. Right. <laughs> Got, to, got into the airport now because my, my luggage was out dead fast because I think it's because it was business class. I've never I've never had luggage come out that fast in it, my life. It would it would make sense that if you have paid business class that your Aye. luggage would be the first ones off, wouldn't it? But, well, but then a, how do they business class tag on it? Like oh, well, I was going to yeah. say how do they distinguish between them? So there is a different tag for business class. Aye. It's, I mean it's it's the best money you'll ever spend. I mean, it's it's essentially the price of a fucking second-hand car, but <laughs> I, I swear to God, it's so worth it. How long, the, how long was the flight? Eight hours? Eleven hours and then seven and a half, eight hours. Uh, but because, so, because I've been going out to Perth for a good bit of last year, seven hours and ten hours, whatever's not that bad, mm. really. Like, it's not, it's not too, but because I was going to Sydney at Christmas, that's an extra five hours for the second flight. Right. And I was like, I'm going business class for that, fuck it, it it's... Because hmm. that's that's when it really gets f fucking kills you, like. Yeah. Uh, but I, I mean, I regret nothing apart from the fact that I, I will never buy a house <laughs> or a second hand or car. Or a second hand car. Like, that we already going to have to drive until it falls apart because I'm broke. <laughs> uh, and then I Dublin Airport, f t very confusing airport. First of all, I couldn't because you picked me up. Yeah. And I had no idea where you were. It's, it's a, a weird hole. Like, it's the upstairs downstairs thing. Of right. It. But and then I was walking out, right? <clears throat> and this is fucking pissed me off. Too. I'm very angry. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm not really, but I'm glad to see the hands changed. I'm so chill. I was so chill for six months, but I was like, this is fucking great, man. Wearing thongs, can't. We haven't, we haven't come on to your uh, Australian accent yet, but it was I don't have a. Do, do I sound different? Not now, but you did an episode now where we had a lot it's been of a people. A couple of times where, like, hands. but uh, yeah, but again, right? You have to when you talk the way we talk. You can't be talking no, like that you, you when you're. To. You have to change because nobody understands the word you're fucking saying. But you've already changed. You, you, Sorry, you're you're used to changing. I'm polite. No, but I mean your accent's changed. Like you don't have a Lurgan accent. You got rid of it. You anglicised yourself. And but you know what? I was gigging on Lurgan last night, and I was that nervous about sounding like I'd been in Australia. I put a Lurgan accent on. <laughs> I could, I, I could yeah. hear myself doing it. <laughs> so I was like, please welcome to the stage, Mickey Martin. Where are you going on? You bunch of cunt motherfuckers. He's get me off, fucking up a rail. Uh, but I'm walking out of the airport, right? So I'd fucking wee bag of duty free, got you a couple of wee smokes. Cheers. I got my nephew a remote control car and I got my niece a wee fucking Pack baby doll thing, right? I got her, got her packing fags there. <laughs> but do my suitcase cover, it's a photo of my man dad. It's fucking right? deadly. Like. Now, it's <laughs> fuck it, because no matter how tired you are, how sad you are getting off a plane, when you see that fucking thing come around the carousel, it just cheers everybody up, <laughs> right? So it, I, I was crushing fucking baggage collection oh, every, every, like, every oh, airport right. it was in right? <laughs> <laughs> like, who the fuck's got that I'm like <laughs> and, I have to say when I put up the boot in the car I was like that is fucking it's genius it's so funny like, so to explain to, to people so who don't know what it is it's for Christmas last <laughs> year before last year mm -hmm. uh, my man and dad got me a suitcase cover with a picture of them on it when they were in New York and they're all this right and it's freezing cold and they're both wearing sunglasses and my dad's like ah and my man's like right so that's what my suitcase looks yeah, Nobody steals your bag, right? And just, just to point out, it's not a, like a far away shot. It's, it's a close up of the two of them. Like, that's the size of a full <laughs> fucking suitcase. Cell. See my mask films and all. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, 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 
Gen- it's fucking it's I genius love it. in the it way genius. you'll always know when yours is coming out yeah. right away from from halfway across the airport you, oh, you, can, fucking, you can hear people laughing carrying it in <laughs> And I've, I've so many videos of seeing it because even there's a couple of times where I was getting internal flights in Australia and I was seeing it go on the plane and I'm like fucking class make a wee montage later but so I was walking out of the airport and I saw this wee dude and he was looking at my suitcase mm-hmm. so I had my suitcase in the right hand and then I had all the duty free stuff in the left hand and I, I could tell from fucking 15 feet away he's coming over here just because that bag stood out and he feels like it has to be doing something <laughs> and was like trying to give me a hard time about the duty free stuff and I'm like, you haven't even looked at the fucking bag I've got there. You're stern with my eye, you pervert. <laughs> it's not a piece of meat. <laughs> yeah, he's more concerned about the, uh, the, the, the the suitcase cover than what's in the Aye. cover. And, the actual and then he's like, how many cigarettes do you have there? And I went, 600. He went, that's too many. And I'm like, no, it isn't. <laughs> and he just went, I? No, he's just like, he's just going ahead. <laughs> that, that was the one good thing about it. He was like, ah, fuck it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> then you know you're home. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it ticking? I don't know. Ah, fuck it. Right. <laughs> have you got your bazooka, sir? Uh, <laughs> what's that smell it is although saying that when I got home yesterday like you were there like my niece is two and I haven't seen her in six months and she can talk now <laughs> right she thought you were I uncle. was Uncle Michael I, for a long time she was like who the fuck but it was like it is so I'm thinking about I this, played on the two which didn't help matters but I've been thinking about this because so like when I left she was sort of like mama dada that yeah. was it and then yesterday she's like any bangs that like <laughs> 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 Who the fuck says, cunt? Which one of these bass is my uncle? I have shit. It's when your ma said, wave at Uncle Michael and she waves at me and I'm like, hello. I know, and then she was like, oh wait, no. <laughs> Which one of you two fucking dicks my uncle? Um, but you know, do you know what's really got, and it's the one thing I'm even sort of homesick, and it's, is missing out on the sort of six months of my niece, but going from like a baby to... A toddler, if you know what I mean. Yeah, uh, it's a, a quick. You, so, uh, what you're trying to say, you never once FaceTime in six months. I did, but she wouldn't fucking talk to me. So, all right, okay. Because I, essentially, when you think about it, I've been away for a year, right? So, oh, I know. Do you know what I mean? So, like, I went to Australia last May, went back yeah. in July. Yeah. August was in Edinburgh. Then yeah. it was back in September. Yeah. And Taylor was here. We were all over the place on the 11th of December again, right? Mm-hmm. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, Even before I went away at Christmas, my niece was like, who the fuck is this? Come. <laughs> he, he turns up, he's off my present. Fair enough, I, she was one when last time. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, so at, at FaceTime home, she'd be like, hi, Michael. And I'd be like, hi, Aaron. And then she'd just fuck off. <laughs> but there was something that I've been thinking about. And it's, there, there's a wee thing, and you you kids, you know this. She's, she's learned shame, <laughs> right? <laughs> so for her birthday, I sent over this wee, like, uh, it's like a wee baby, wee tiny piano with a microphone on it, mm-hmm. right? It looks like a wee grand piano, but it's for kids. Right. And my sister was like, oh, she loves it. She's playing, with it. She's, she's playing on the piano. She's going A, B, C, D, right? And then sister's like, wait for the moment where she starts taking a shit because she was like squatting down, right? <laughs> and I realized there's a point in a child's life where they go from like, they'll just be standing there and then just like shitting. Yeah. Where they'll start shitting, realize somebody's looking at them and they'll start going, the fuck am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? They're like, they're like, don't, don't fuck, don't fucking look at me. <coughs> Trying to take shit, and that was of a video on my phone of my niece catching my sister videoing her and being like, <laughs> "How am I going to tell her what I've just done?" It's, it's a fascinating <laughs> me thing to say. You're just like, "Fuck, who taught you that?" Because <laughs> before you were shitting people's hands, you didn't give a fuck, and now you're like, "All oh, oh, manners." Nah, Ruby hasn't got that shame yet. Fucking first header. <laughs> Nor should she. Because the way I'm feeling right now, I could shit in front of anybody that wants to see. Here, yeah, you want some? Uh, yeah. So I mean, that, that was that, that was uh, that was very funny yesterday with your uh, with your niece. Just I was very confused. Yeah, <laughs> and we didn't help matters much. But she's she's a, such a smart. We I know like girls are usually smarter than fellas when they're younger. <laughs> when they're younger, I mean, as they get older, they just get more lippy. I mean, <laughs> you know, Welcome was, back, baby. Do you know what I was thinking the other day? Right? Because I realised now in my, in my mid thirties, right? <laughs> there's nothing scares me more mm-hmm. in life, right? And this has been through throughout my entire life. If I'm in a kitchen, right, washing dishes or doing something, trying to be a good boy, mm-hmm. and a woman, no, girlfriend, fucking relative, relative no matter aunt, whatever who it is. is if a woman walks into the kitchen when I'm doing something and doesn't talk, I get afraid because I'm like, I've done something. I've fucked something up here. <laughs> do you know that? 
Do you get that? Do you read that at home? No, we're, we're together. You have a dishwasher? We're, we're together 25 years. I uh, suppose. Walking into a room and not speaking is quite common. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it strikes fear into me, right? <laughs> Gen- well, what do you think is the fear of? It's, I don't know. Right? Like you haven't dried that. Dead, right? Dead Hot was in Perth. It was doing the dishes, right? <laughs> and Taylor came in and didn't say anything. And I was like, I couldn't see her, but I felt like she was going on the right. And then she just stood beside me when it was like washing a glass. I was fucking panicking, right? And then I had this thought in my head. I was like, I could beat the fuck out of her. <laughs> so I wouldn't. I would never do that. But on but paper, physically you could. On yeah. paper. And then I started thinking, I wonder how many women I could fight. <laughs> I reckon I could fight 10 grown women. I don't know about 10. Though. Ah, you could take on 10. No, nah, you couldn't Standards? Take ten. No, 10, Six, 10, maybe. 10 normal women. Ah, uh, yeah. But 10 Lizzo's. Oh, fuck no, you couldn't. You're, fucking, you're not, Jesus like. Christ, you couldn't even take you're a water. Couldn't hit a whole one. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's some neck on her too, aren't you? We shouldn't do that, because have you seen what South Park did? No. Oh, my fucking God. I seen her, was she giving off about it? She was watching it and live reacting to them doing a, basically the whole, I think it's South Park, uh, Battle of the Obesity or something like that it's called or something. And they, have you watched it? They, uh, it's about the Ozempic. Right. You know, there are all these ones trying to go Ozempic and then the, the ones who can't afford Ozempic, don't worry, you're just going to have to take some Lizzo. And uh, just listen to a bit of Lizzo. It'll help your body positivity. You won't have to worry about exercise. Right, okay. <laughs> and but, she's watching. I'm like, oh. And she's watching going, what the fuck? But the cheek of her shirt, was she not fucking a lot of cheek? Cancelled for... <laughs> e, that was good. Uh, she's some crack too, I'd say. Um, did she not get fucking cancelled? She didn't get cancelled for fat, fat shaming? Come here to tell you, Lizzo, take a look in that big giant mirror. The wide one you have in your right, That's not a fun house. What do you look like? <laughs> <laughs> Stop doing that now, because we are not any way representative of what it's like to I be thin. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> <laughs> but we are wild crack. Oh, but um, what else are we going to say to you? I can't remember now. I'm, 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 you have six months. Basically, I, I say I could catch, up, the thing I is, could catch up on emails, emails here, because, I mean, I'm, I'm done. Like I've done you know. Six months of doing the same thing every day. So I have no crack. <laughs> well, I suppose that is strange for you to to do the same. You know, you're used to being and like was, even here. You'd be going to Scotland, or you go. You know, I, be, it was there was like when mel- you're in Perth, you're in Perth. You're not going anywhere else. Like there's I, nowhere else to like, unless and you like, take a flight. Yeah, yeah. But even like with so because I, I had Perth fringe was sort of halfway through January to halfway through February, right. and then I went to Sydney. Did I? No. Adelaide went to Adelaide. Adelaide for I a know month. where you went the morning. I know. And Adelaide's like a really small... Adelaide's the one bit of Australia where you don't feel that bad looking. That must be where they send the ugly ones. <laughs> I swear to God, you're walking around Adelaide like I might get my hole here. <laughs> and I won't even be, it'll, I'll be being chased down the street for having teeth. Some fucking mutants. Like, uh, it's, the, it's the only bit of Australia I went to the beach and took my top off. Didn't give a fuck. <laughs> well, you know, that's I was fucking feast your eyes. Look that. Both nipples. Oh, <laughs> uh, but I, so, but Adelaide was like, you're. Do, it's the same gig in the same room. Oh, so it's right, it's like right. any other French festival, but you're only doing ten minutes. Oh fuck right. So right. it hit the point like about halfway through Melbourne, I legitimately was think I'm having a breakdown. Because, no, and and Melbourne, Melbourne as well. Because right, Melbourne okay. was even worse because Melbourne was the same gig four times a day. Oh fuck. And ten minutes each time. T- ten to twelve minutes each time. Were, but is Melbourne not more of an established one than Adelaide in that sense? Melbourne's, aye, so Melbourne's Ad, pretty Ad, famous for it. Aye, it? Adelaide's a fringe, Melbourne's a proper comedy festival. Right, but okay. the thing was that I was doing, gigs I was doing were almost like the, the fringe of the Melbourne comedy festival. Mm-hmm. So I was doing a show called Best of British, right? I'm not happy about it. Best of? British. I was doing the Best of Irish as well, because mm-hmm. Good Friday Agreement, Peace, Love, Building Bridges. <laughs> Mama told me to be days like this. Uh, <laughs> Take advantage of both. Like. Fucking right. I'll take, their double fuck, job I'll take the twice. fucking bastards' money. <laughs> that's how you get. That's how you get it back. Doing the double. That's uh, the way to do it. <laughs> but um, so because of that it was like there was four of us, and it, you were just everybody's doing the same set mm-hmm. three, four times a day. The one time I tried to change my set, the guy running the gig was like, "Don't be changing your set because it, it didn't go well." Bombed, died on my whole one night. Right. And then this 
guy was like, don't ever fucking change a word of your set. I, I, this is the set I'm paying you for. And I wouldn't mind, but he was probably the worst comedian I've ever seen. 10 or 12 minutes. I, and like, I'm gonna, about five, I was like, I'm going to hours in your pocket. Fucking, I can hold you over this balcony and beat the fucking Britishness out of you, you wee English cunt. You. It, all, it all came out. Do you know what I mean? Getting told off by an Englishman. I was like, ah, fucking Michael, they have taken you away. And uh, so I, I was, so I cancelled Edinburgh. So if you bought tickets to see me at the Edinburgh Fringe, I'm not going. <laughs> I haven't said that out loud, but just I just went fuck it. I'm not doing any more mm. festivals this year. Uh, Cause it's grueling, like man, it's it fucking physically and mentally. I so mean, even tiring. just like I was over for four days with you last year, and I was fucked. And I'm like, I don't know how you're able to do 26, 28 Cocaine! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do know how you do it. I just don't do it. No, but in fairness, last year you were quite sensible at the French, and it wasn't really to like over you actually properly had a real rip. That was the first real rip. And I, but it was again, the same. It was like, Melbourne wasn't really... Like Adelaide, there, there was a load... So I didn't drink from the 1st of January. No, I had a couple of... Two or three pints, mm-hmm. sort of, with a mate. But... Uh, First of January to halfway through February, and the weight that I lost. I think we did a podcast where I was mm-hmm. like, the fucking weight I'm losing. Mm-hmm. Felt great. Got to Adelaide, and I was like, right. You weren't used to that feeling. That's what it was. It was <laughs> you I was, didn't like that feeling. <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed being sober, right? right? Like, really, really enjoyed it. Like, mental clarity and all. I was like, I, was, I still get a wee bit stoned every so often. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not fucking, not, yeah. A snatch. Uh, but then Adelaide, because there was nothing else to do, so we were living about 20 minutes outside of the town centre. Mm-hmm. And by the time you got in for the gig, you were like, there's no fucking point going back to the house. Yeah. So I ended up drinking near enough under duress. Do you know what I mean? I know that sounds weird, but it was no, like, I there's nothing else to do. Because you were actually very well behaved in the first week. And I thought, what the fuck is going on I was on enjoying here? it, man. And I was like, I was, I was fucking boxing training. I was lifting weights. I was, I was feeling really healthy. I was eating mm-hmm. healthy and all that sort of stuff. So then and, Adelaide and do you was, think Adelaide and Ed, it's, it, it was, because you, you had messaged me during that saying that it was, excuse what me, did you say? <laughs> and the, that it was the boredom. Yeah, it was just, there's nothing to do. Uh, so then I was ended up, I think, drinking when I was going, I didn't want to be fucking drinking. Mm. So then I wasn't enjoying the drinking. And then Melbourne, I wasn't going too much. I'd say there's no crack in Adelaide, is there? Yeah. Ah, there's not, it's tiny. Like, I mean, right. and the whole fringe festival's in one street. Oh, right, okay. Do you know what I mean? So you're just sort of bouncing about the same four pubs. Mm-hmm. Um, anybody, then it was, anybody from here at the Adelaide one? No. Ryan Cullen was over. All right. Okay. Uh, so Ryan Cullen helped me locate a man. I got some wee edibles. Oh, all right. Yes. Good uh-huh. time. Went to the uh-huh. zoo. Stoned. Good. Very funny. <laughs> very very funny. When you see Gibbons walking about and you're high as fuck, <laughs> you're like, ah, oh, same, bro. <laughs> Went to a butterfly butterfly pavilion. Stoned, and a butterfly landed on my hand, and I was like, Man, I think this is my granny. <laughs> Do you always want to come out here? Spit of her tool the beard. <laughs> Um, but I and then Melbourne was like it, it, so we were gigging in the one pub well mm-hmm. no the best of British was in the one pub so I would do basically go to the pub at four o'clock do the best of British walk up do best of Irish then walk back and do three best of British right and that's also the pub where all the comedians would come and have pints after oh, all the gigs great, yeah. so you end up just in it and I didn't realise we were all fucking losing our minds until somebody that wasn't doing the gig it was like every year I walk into that bar and I see the the comedians doing Best of British and they're all fucking out of their minds hmm. with just Groundhog Day. Like you're just fucking shell-shocked near enough. Mm. There's, there's times you're on stage going, have I told this joke? Fuck. I don't like... Yeah. So I fucking hate it. Because even Edinburgh, like you only do one show a day. That crack there, well, you might pop in for a 10-minute slot somewhere, but they're not, a, they're not mandatory. But you had four, what, four times a day? Well, the, yeah, so the thing was, the, the the night the guy told me off for changing my setup, mm-hmm. right? Now, this is a bloke I'd worked with in Perth and Adelaide. So he'd seen me change my set all the time. And as soon as he told me off for doing it, and he, I hope he doesn't hear this, but he's the type of guy that he's a bit, he was a bit of a bully. So when he owed you money, he'd be a cunt to you, right? Because he, he knew, he, you could see him walk in every, when he's been paid, he would walk in and have like a, a certain amount of power over, Right, the comedians, yeah. right? And he talks about the show like it's his show and you're going, you're not doing anything. Mm-hmm. You you get up and do the same joke you've been doing for 10 years to the point where the audience that have come back are shouting your punchlines out. Oh, for fuck's sake. The show is the four comedians have mm-hmm. brought over, but that's that's just me being fucking picky about things. Uh, but as soon as he was like, don't be changing your set, 
my brain went, well, you're getting the same fucking 12 minutes every day and I'm not changing. If I get heckled, I'm not even fucking addressing it. Addressing it, yeah. So I was just in autopilot being like, fuck you. Like, Cause then it takes all the fun. Like, there's it takes no, all the crack yeah, out of it. Like, there's no fun. There's no, there's no incentive. There's to, no edge to I, it. Because you can, you know, you know yourself, you'd react or you'd say something. Or you'd, but if you've just checked out, you're like, fuck them. We'll just get this done. I, and I think then as well, the weather was fucking shit in Melbourne. So you go from sort of 42 degrees in Adelaide to 18 degrees in Melbourne. I thought it was, I'm so terrible. Melbourne, so I Melbourne's thought, four seasons in one day. Oh, right. I like, thought Australia was all just hot. No, nah, Mel, I don't know. And Melbourne's on the East Coast too, so it doesn't really make sense. Like Sydney could be 32 degrees and Melbourne's fucking 19. But it feels cold. Right. And it's a big city. It does, it, like I said before, it does feel like it's, there's like a London vibe to it. All right, okay. There's a lot of people that are just there to say they're there, even though they can't afford to be there. And it's, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, and, and Perth ways, what's the population roughly? I mean, are we talking the same as Belfast? Or are you talking same as Northern Ireland? It's about two million in Perth. So then Melbourne's but, obviously bigger but, again. Aye, but Perth is right. Perth actual Perth city, like the actual city centres, about the same size as Belfast. Right. Okay. But the outskirts are all wee cities. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So like, there's kind of like Belfast. Well, they're small towns or small. Like Dun Murray and Finnegan and all that. Yeah, they're yeah. But they're all like, like, they're cities. Yeah, they're all, and they're all linked by motorways. So it's like Perth's like. Because there was one day I was going boxing training, and that I was getting an Uber because Taylor needed her car, selfish bitch. <laughs> and I, 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 but so whenever I would type the 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 name of the boxing gym in the Google Maps, it wouldn't come up. So I had to Google it, find the address, type the address in, mm-hmm. right? So the address is Wanneroo Road. So I typed in the Uber, but Wanneroo Road's fucking massive. Oh right. So right. I get, get the back of this Uber and. The easiest person in the world to kidnap, Connor. Right? <laughs> I get the back of this Uber and the guy goes onto the motorway and I'm going, you really going on the motorway? And I look at the thing, it's like 25 minutes to get to the gym and I'm like, it's only eight minutes usually. And instead of going, mate, I think I put the wrong thing in or you're going the wrong way, I went, there must be a traffic thing somewhere and he knows how to get around it. Right? Typical fucking Irish thing. Eh? Sort of fuck, man. Don't Got to that. the point, the guy just pulled it, goes, this you here? And I went, yep. Get out of you the Uber. Not. Right? Get out of the Uber. Gave him five stars too, right? And then, well, it wasn't his fault. And then I had to wait about five minutes to get another Uber because I thought if I fucking order an Uber and he comes back, and I'm just standing at the side of the road in wee shorts, <laughs> so embarrassed. Like, um, but I remember getting out of the car and thinking, well, it's probably I'll just get my burns and I'll walk to the gym. I couldn't be that far away, and I looked and it was a fifteen minute drive or a four and a half hour walk because it's all motorways. She can't. You have to go bypass motorways. So, motorway. yeah. oh, fuck. Um, <laughs> but Perth, Perth's my favourite city in Australia because right. it's it's there's a, it's very chilled out and everybody seems quite nice and that's where you get the ride that's where you get the ride too, yeah. but it's like oh unless you're fucking if you're single go to Adelaide because they're choking for a bit of dick because <laughs> God love them you wouldn't touch them by the but, way I meant Taylor I don't mean you're riding everybody in Perth just, oh no fuck no you're, you're riding Taylor you're riding we're, we're in love we don't have sex <laughs> <laughs> oh, welcome we, to we have fart power. competitions that's what we have <laughs> um but, yeah, so it's like Melbourne, I think, is full of people who are like, I live in Melbourne. Sydney, there's a lot more posers in it. Right. Purse real chilled out. Adelaide's a bit fucking shithole. It's not a shithole, it's nice. Adelaide's very British. Right. Adelaide feels like Benidorm. So you fit it in well, then? No. Nah. Right. There's no Irish pub. There's no Irish pub. There's, I think there's one now. Um, that's the only city in the world I've been to. There's no fucking Irish bar. Yeah, in it. normally it's like no matter where you go, you find one somewhere. Very funny story, and she won't mind me saying this, right? Mm-hmm. So I was living with a comedian called Mick Ferry from Manchester and a comedian called Maureen Younger from London, right? Mm-hmm. And fuck two stories. We right? seen the ep- we had the episode of with Mick Ferry. Yeah, yeah. So oh, so you heard about the did I, did I talk about the midnight train to Georgia? You didn't watch it either, did you? Nah. I don't know. Did I? <laughs> so just in case anybody hadn't seen it, right? Two things that happened. First of all, we, first day we were in Adelaide, I went and did a show and came back and I was like, it was a very, it was hard to figure out if the show was good or not, right? There was, there's not that many people go to the Adelaide Fringe and Monday to Wednesday, it's fucking dead, right? So I did a show on a Monday and I was telling Mick, I was like, look, there was somebody in the front row who was clearly trans, Right? Mm-hmm. With his or her brother, because I'm not sure. Because the the bloke, I said, who like who are you with? I went on oh, with my brother, and I was like, that's a girl, right? So it was one of those situations where I'm going, I'm not going to get into it because mm. it's none of my business. Fucking minefield, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
So I get back to the house and tell Mick about it, and Mick's going, you motherfucker. He's like, Maureen, and Tran. And because he's such a wind up merchant, I was like, fuck, dead on. And he's like, I'm fucking real. He's fucking real. Right? And I'm like, you're taking the piss. And he's like, I'm so see for about a week. This really works and for for our, our visual for, for about a week, right? All I could do was look at Maureen Younger's hands and try and figure out if she's right. She's she's not. She's, she's born a woman. Right? She actually had womb cancer. That's how much of a right. Okay. So so then I'm like, Mick, I don't think she is trans. And he's going, No, she's not. I forgot to tell you. I was thinking of somebody else. And I'm like, <laughs> well, two weeks. I've been walking about, <laughs> walking about on scrotum shells. <laughs> Scroll up. So there's one day. There's one day. <laughs> one day I'm fucking FaceTime and Taylor, right? And Taylor's like, "Do you miss me?" And I'm like, "I do miss you." Yeah. I just like, "How much do you miss me?" Right. For those of you just listening, I'm miming slipping down a, a wee vest top, right? Oh, I thought she was brushing her arm. <laughs> right. And I, but I'm like, "Okay, oh, here we here we go, pet. Well, play. Here we go." Right. <laughs> Bedroom door flies open, and Maureen's like, "Mickey, my love, I'm gonna go to the beach. Do you wanna come to the beach with me?" And I'm like. Hold like, no, nah, not not right now, I'm waiting. <laughs> and she's like, Are you sure you don't want to come? And I'm like, Oh no, I'm up for that. <laughs> Just not to the beach. Your your grand, right? <laughs> and Taylor's like, fuck. <laughs> so Maureen leaves and I'm like, sorry, Pet, where were we? She's like, Yeah, how much do you miss me? I'm like, Oh yeah. Then the next thing I can hear is Mick Furry singing the back and the back and vocals to Midnight Train to Georgia. Right? <laughs> so I, I'm trying to have a fucking wee sneaky FaceTime wank with my with my partner. And all like all, all I can hear is leaving. <laughs> On that midnight train to Georgia. I was like, I'll, I'll phone you later. <laughs> and then you jump back. I'm going back to band. Came, came straight out of the room, you fucking mank cunt. <laughs> <laughs> but Mick, he's, he's one of my, I would call him a dear friend after the two months of Adelaide and Melbourne. Because ah, Mick's <laughs> mum and dad are from Donegal. Oh, right. So he's a raging fiendian. Right. Okay. And there was a couple nights we were at a British bar. And he's from, he's from Manchester, like, we're at this fucking the elephant wheelbarrow when I'm um, doing oh, the, uh, the yeah. fucking the pit bull and cocker spaniel or whatever the fuck, <laughs> and uh, Mick out of nowhere just starts going. It was so no, it wasn't. That's the sash. He started, he started, <laughs> he started singing rebel songs, and I near fucking ripped the, ripped the table up. What the fuck? Mick? Just take it back. Um, and he's playing libraries in October, and I would very much recommend going to see him. Oh, that's very, not that very very okay. funny comedian. Really going to see him, yeah. One of those guys should be a millionaire. Right. Okay. Like, I think he's has written for a lot of famous comedians as well. Right. Uh, Somebody like yourself should be a millionaire. Sure. I don't think I should be a millionaire. I don't think it would suit me. No, there'd be too many business class flights you know I mean? fucking to keep up with. Tell you what's better than being a millionaire is living like one when you can't. Do you know what I mean? Don't save anything. <coughs> Spend it to fuck. Do you know what I mean? You're happier that way. It keeps you hungry. It does. Do you know what I mean? I'm stopping. Literally and physically. Yeah. Um, physically? Physically? Metaphorically? Figuratively, I meant to say. Aye. Aye. I should have come wasting away. Sure eh? Figuratively hungry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, have you been keeping up with the news from here? I mean, you know, we now have the, the tags are in charge. Uh -huh. Two women in charge. Two women About in charge. time. Well, About time. Happened the last time, too. I would sure were with them. <laughs> Fucked off. Text your children on WhatsApp. Aye, looks uh, you, you, Jeffrey, obviously. Oh, why he's a uh, he? Uh, well, not officially. We're not allowed to say that. Um, one thing we can guarantee—I've—I've I've talked to this on stage where we can guarantee that the name Jeffrey is now dead. Nobody will be calling their children Jeffrey. Oh, really? Well, you've got Epstein, Dahmer, and now Donaldson. That's a, <sighs> it's dead. Like right, it's dead. It's done. That's so, the new Adolf. There, yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing can bring it back. And the three of them all did similar stuff. You said Jeffrey Donaldson was eating people. He <laughs> <laughs> was he being it? <laughs> was delicate he put, putting the D in DUP was he De delicate? <laughs> Did you pay? Uh, the dirty uncle party. I so I don't know what what's what generally what is the so he has official been, uh, news? The official news is he's, he has been charged, but not um, convicted. Convicted yet because the court case has to happen, but. Yeah, it's, I'm charged with. Well, this is the thing. I I, I know what's going around mm -hmm. in regard, but I won't repeat. Chlamydia. it. <laughs> but I won't repeat it here. 
Uh, but uh, I because I don't I don't know if that's the entire story. Right. Sorry, but yeah, it's been if it's true. I mean, it's, it's not only is he never going to do politics again, but he could be doing fourteen, fifteen years in jail. Hell. If it's it's because he was doing fourteen, fifteen years. It was private. Is that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Notesy, notesy. <laughs> don't go down that road. Um, that's mad. Yeah. Well, it's, it's it surprises me anytime we hear a politician is an honest person. Yeah. I'm always shocked. Yeah. Do you know? And it's always the fucking altar liquors. It's always what? the altar liquors. The ones are always the, the most preachiest, the front oh. of the altar. Mm. You know what I mean? They're always the ones. I've never heard altar liquor before. There's an altar liquor. Oh, very good. Mm. I like it though. I'm going to use that. Please don't, because I've used it. Ah, oh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to fart again. I'm really sorry. No. No. No, we're not pushing that one. Okay. No. I'm going to leave that where it is. <laughs> <laughs> just let that bubble you, up. You could tell from the frequency. <laughs> just let that simmer. <clears throat> Jesus wept. Um, <laughs> there's no other crack I know. I've, I want to. I want to bet you a wee bit again about a gig. Right. Okay. Did a gig last night in Lurgan. Mm-hmm. Always the cultural hub of Northern Ireland, in my opinion. Let's just highlight this. I mean, first of all, I dropped you off at around four p.m. So you only got home at four. I. Your gig was that? Eight o'clock. <laughs> Eight o'clock. So your scheduling is always superb. I just started saying yes to stuff. But in fairness, you, the gig was what, like 15 yards from your house? Aye, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so. um, but, <clears throat> the because Lurgan always gets a bit of a slagging, right? <clears throat> hmm. And I am proud of the wee town I'm from. Yeah. I think the majority of people are very nice, right? Now every so often something I'll say something in Lurgan, That'll make me go, ah, for fuck's sake. Collie Duffy. No, I mean, proud of him. <laughs> the, the, I once saw a blind guy walking down the street mm-hmm. with a cane mm-hmm. and a dog, right? Mm-hmm. Look at his watch and then hurry up. And the guy dog was behind him, right? And two weeks later, I saw the same man walking out of the gym <laughs> with his cane and a set of car keys, right? So there's certain things like that in Lurgan that happen. They make me go, fuck, there's a reason we're getting this reputation, but I mean, <laughs> so last night doing the gig in the courthouse, it was me, Paddy McDonald, and uh, or Paddy McDonald or IP, as he's going to be. <laughs> <laughs> and Susie McCabe, right? Uh huh. And so nobody would sit in the front row, nobody, sorry, I should say, nobody would sit in the row because if you've ever been to the courthouse, you'll know it's all high tables and all right, okay, right? Yeah. So they'd put out one row of seats in the front just to make it like a sort of a yeah, make an audience, right. Nobody sat there, so Paddy was like, come on to fuck, somebody sit in the front row. And there was three people in the front, right? And this is going to sound like a, they just hated me, right? From the fucking get-go, didn't like me, right? I'm looking. And I, at this moment in my head where I went, I've, I've seen this configuration of people so many times, I'm not even shocked, you just don't like me, right? <laughs> and what it was, was a, 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 quite a camp guy in his 30s, uh-huh. and two women in their early 20s. Right, yeah, and I've gone psychological profile. The reason you're mates with them too is because you've had a hard time probably being the only gay fellow you knew. Mm-hmm. You've been fucking bullied, and people have, have been a dick to you, and that's wrong. But it's now made you a wee bit, a bit of a hard person to impress, mm-hmm. right? You've been a bit defensive, mm-hmm. and the reason you're hanging about with these two girls in their 20s is because they're cunts and nobody likes them, <laughs> right? You're a wee band of misfits, great, happy for you. Right, one of these girls was talk, talking the whole way through the set, right, and l- like giving me real evils at any joke, right. Right. One point I did a joke about Stephen Hawking on the Epstein Island, mm-hmm. and she goes, "Who even is he?" Right, and I'm like, uh, and I'm finding myself so tired. Welcome home, so Mick. fucking jet lag, right? <laughs> and I'm going, see the fact that the other 150 people in this room are laughing their balls off should take the attitude out of you. You should know. This is your problem now. You don't know who the fuck Stephen Hawking is. And you think it's my fault. Right? And then at one point I said, I was like, you fucking dick, you're looking at me like you hate me. And she goes, well, you haven't said anything funny. And I just pointed around the rest of the room and went, yes, sir. And then I went, and by the way, laughter is contagious. So you must be a fucking robot if you're not getting any of this. Right? And then I was getting them a last joke and they got up and left. The guy, the fellow had already got up and left. Right? So the guy was wearing, I'd, I'd made a wee joke, but he was wearing a, a chain outside of his top. And I was like, look, you sexy. And it was a compliment. Was mm-hmm. like, you sexy wee fucker. Wearing a, that's a brave thing to do is wear jewelry outside of your clothes. Mm-hmm. Right? He got up and left at one point. So I'm getting the last joke. The two girls leave. And I just step out of the bed and go, 
all the best ladies, right? And the whole room cheers. So then they're fucking fuming, right? So me, my dad and my sister, my dad and sister came to the gig right. and I, I didn't have the mental capacity to do anything that wasn't pure filth. Mm-hmm. So I do apologize to my family <laughs> for some of the shit I was saying, right? <laughs> Especially when you just stand up beside each other, right? Yeah, it's a bit more awkward I, your, it was your sister sitting yeah, with your yeah. dad. And, yeah, because <laughs> before I went on, I was like, I don't think dad realizes how dirty my stand up is these days. And she was like, please, Michael, don't, please. Please don't do this to me. And I was like, I can't think. I have nothing in here. I'm too, I'm too tired to, to pull anything else out. So we're getting fucking full. Filth, Pure filth. Right? <laughs> and I've told you some of the new things on the way up. It's, it's, it's bad. Like, right? So we're sitting upstairs afterwards. We're just having a couple of drinks, catching up, fucking having a bit of crack. And my dad and my sister were getting a taxi home. So I was like, I'm going to go out for a smoke. So I go out. It's just me. And there's them three fuckers in the front row. Oh. I just couldn't look at them. Right. And I could hear them being like, yeah, the girl was funny. She was very funny talking about the hotel. That was very good, right? And I'm like, I know what you're doing because I've met a million of you. Yeah, sounds right. Got a message last night where it was a guy who was telling me what they were saying after the gig, right? right? And one of the girls was going, "I didn't expect to have the fucking microphone shoved in my face." And I'm like, that literally didn't happen. What what happened was you were that aggressive to me. I was afraid and kind of stopped looking at you. <laughs> I actually physically turned like that. At one point, like my niece having a shite. <laughs> the shame. Like I was like I was ashamed to be standing in front of you, that fucking hard to make laugh. And I thought, f- fuck Lurk. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like a wee baptism of fire to get fucking you back into it again. I bring you back to reality. But that's what it is. You see, I think the word has spread around Lurgan that you were flying business class and they just will not accept you again. No, everyone else was all right. Like <laughs> nobody in Lurgan's ever flown business class. Like. There's bound to be one. <laughs> Neil Lennon's bound to have done it once or oh, twice. Like, fair to say, might have done it, yeah. But only to Glasgow. Like. <laughs> Which just means front seat Aye. on the easy jet plate. If you sit in the pilot's knee. <laughs> beep, beep. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that was you were straight in last night. Mm-hmm. Fucking no kissing. And uh, you, you, the one thing you were, we'll talk about it in the, in the bonus episode for our patrons. Uh, the one thing you were dying to get last night. Chong's welcome. Oh, right, I was talking about the ride. But, um... Oh, no, sure. <laughs> Had that this morning, didn't the pet? <laughs> I miss you, too. I miss you. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm just so glad we have a, a bonus episode today as well, because I... normally uh, the questions were like... When's Mickey back? When's Mickey back? Or there's four of them, four questions. You know? I haven't even oh, checked how many we have today. There's like fucking 16 or 18. Oh, class, well, that's fucking wrap us uh, up. So I need to go to bed. Yeah, and sh- shout out to all the... Because this is the thing, we, we, me and Mickey talk about this. We know... Mickey and I talk about this. I know he'll pull me up in the grammar. Uh, we know the we know who stayed. A lot, of, a lot of people left us. That's hard. Which, fair enough. You know, cost of living crisis and all that. Not awful lot out. And that was, but I, we I, remember. <laughs> we know who stayed, and we. Know. It is the thing too. I would like to apologise for not putting enough out when I was in Australia. There, there wasn't the time, and then this even or the capacity the, to the, understand the, technology. Ju- the, well, that was one issue because if you've seen the ones that I did put up from Melbourne. Fuck me, what a disaster, right? <laughs> I, I gave all the podcast stuff I bought, I gave it away for free. I just handed it to somebody and went, that's your problem now. Could you not have bought like a stack of books to put the camera on like or something? Man, because it was, it was, it was the book. fucking lens, right? So I, I bought the lens for the camera and there's no zoom function on the camera. Right. And then I'd, I'd spent that much on it. I was like, I can't even take this back and get a better lens. <laughs> so every fucking, it looks like you've massive legs. It's like, you know, the end of Beetlejuice. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was like. And then the, the, the I and the one that I did with Mick Ferry, I don't know what happened, but the tripod slipped halfway through it. So it was actually I actually had to edit that. Because initially it looked like fucking nineteen sixties Batman. <laughs> then the sound didn't record. It, it was a fucking disaster. And on top of that it was like See, you had no nev. You were missing. I know. Nev, I and the, the quality of this, the stuff, because it was shitty gear as well, you found yourself going, I don't even want to put that out. I know, yeah. Because it takes away from Well, yeah. Do you know what I mean? The, the, from the, the from all of this <laughs> the grandeur so in summation was in it's thanks very much for staying with us yes and uh, we'll be back up and running now I'm daddy's home daddy's home and uh, yeah so again uh, genuinely thank you very much you've you've been uh, very loyal thank you very much and to those who fucked off well sure they can't hear you they won't hear me but they'll hear it next week on Spotify please come back we love you don't please come back it's on Spotify this is just <laughs> anyway let's go answer some questions on Patreon will we Yes, absolutely. Then, Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Cheers. See you later. All the best. Uh, uh, before we go, oh, because we know we have uh, things to plug. I'm on tour in September. Waterfront, Millennium Forum, all over the place. I'm going to be in England as well. 
don't have an agent anymore because she found out about the tour. But you're here. <laughs> That's my problem. You don't need to worry about it. We'll be in the waterfront on Saturday night. I don't know if hasn't got their tickets. Should get them. Uh, if you're listening to this next week, too late. Right. You missed it. Uh, we haven't been together. Well, I've never done one. You did the last one. Yeah. Uh, so the first time, hopefully we're on the same team. Or maybe they're going to put us against each other. But uh, yeah, that could be good. Never mind the mock blame yeah. in the waterfront so tickets still available go and grab them before Saturday and uh, there may be pints afterwards there's going to be pints afterwards I have to go drinking Sunday too I'm going to get beat up this boxing anyway see you later on all the best trio bye bye bye